Just give me a little bit of peace. Yeah. Steady job and some food to eat. Just give me a little bit of peace. Yeah. Steady job and some food to eat. So this, uh, the dude at the top, the the real dark dude with the big Flavor Flav clock, I feel like that was before Flavor Flav. Am I tripping? Or was that like no, a thing back then? Put the, oh, was after? Okay, never mind. So it Flavor Flav was already a thing. Even, even, with, even with Ice Cube, the Flav had that clock before then. Okay. Flav, so that was it. I mean, I've seen Flav with the clock before we took the NWA cover. Oh, the beginning it came out with Bum Rush the show before uh, NWA. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. And MTV they, was hot back they then. Had, they so. had that big old clock. Okay. Makes a lot of sense. I was hoping I was on to something like we, we we invented that shit and they took it, but I guess not. We'll just move on. <laughs> I mean, we could say it, but we'd be lying. <laughs> <laughs> talk, yeah. You know, talk to me about um, talk to me about you know uh, even the, the movie Straight Outta Compton didn't, in my opinion, give him as much shine as possible. Uh, you know that I believe he deserves uh, at least. But um, MC Ren, right there, he's he's on the he's on the picture as well. Um, talk to me about MC Ren. Um, well, well, I Ren. About Ren. I've been knowing Ren since he was Go like uh, easy the same way. Uh, Ren would come over to Mix Master State House when we was doing the Sound Master free thing. And Ren used to be on the get on the microphone. He said, Oh yeah, it's the Mix Master Ren. So Ren was influenced by the original Compton rappers like Mix Master Ken. Them guys was influenced. He them was influenced by Tidy T and Mix Master Ken and Mix Master Spade. He loved they loved Spade. Ren, that's all I can say about Ren, but we see when Ren turned Muslim uh, he was always in the background anyway. Ren was never one of them dudes all out there on front street. Okay. But he had he with the business, but he wasn't with that business. He wasn't with all that funny business. He let Easy take care of the business. Gotcha. He didn't really want to rap. Easy mm. made him rap because he wanted his friend to be with him. Mm. That's what mm. I thought. Ice Cube rough. did that shit. Ice Cube and, and because Ice Cube was, was the one that influenced Easy. And then, and then Ren, he was back basically in the background, like you said. Mm. But yeah. you, you hear, you um, listen to no Vaseline. It tell you uh, everything right then. Mm. Yeah, I mean, exactly. It's not talking about. I mean, not the content of the song. The content of the song was tight. He put that shit to tight. But he actually broke down little shit in that motherfucking song to where. If you knew, it touched the nerve. And when they did the damn, um, when they did the movie, the movie to me is not correct. Okay, talk to me. You know, especially the way Easy died. But the twist is, uh, 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 listen to that no Vaseline song, and they start telling you exactly how the shit went. A, a lot of shit is accurate, but a lot of shit ain't accurate because it was a Ice Cube and a Dr. Dre movie. If Easy oh, would have been around, how the hell you gonna make a, a NWA movie and not have a front cover on there? Hmm. Yeah. Well, I, I, I like that movie. I like the movie exactly how they did it. You know, if it wasn't for that. Everybody wouldn't be telling their stories now. Once I got the wind of it that they needed some product for the Strata Compton, I immediately stepped my game up and, and started working on really night and day on this film because I knew I couldn't get none of the interviews I wanted or none of the stuff I needed once the movie came out because everybody was going to be looking for a budget. Everybody wants some money. Everybody doing nothing for free. So I got all of my early interviews before the movie came out. A lot of people didn't even know it was coming out. So uh, that makes me smart, you know, Damn. to be to do that, to get all these guys, Ice T and Curtis Blow and Lonzo and all these guys before the movie came out. But to make a long story short, that movie to me is going to go down in history. Yeah. That movie to me is is, is a is a springboard for every if you don't like the damn movie do your own story. Put yourself in the spot where you fit in. Get in where you fit in uh, in the movie. That movie was only smashed up into 20-something years of their careers 
Mm-hmm. Without Easy, you know what I'm saying? Without Easy and other yeah. people's influence, <clears throat> smash it with uh, so, uh, 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 a two hour film. Come on, man. Yeah. It was cool. So, so you think, Scotty, you think that. Just say, just say, I, mean, I ain't gonna say anything about you not being here. Just say if you just went over to an island and didn't motherfuck with nobody no more. And I had to tell your story, or anybody else had to tell your story. It ain't gonna be the story that you actually was telling. That's the same thing with Easy. If Easy was here, everything, that whole movie would have been different, bro. If it was well, like, we give it like an NWA that. movie. That's why I just said my opinion. That's my opinion. My opinion I know. is my opinion. It was a good film. I love your opinion, opinion, man. I love but your I opinion because it's no opinion. It's a great film. F. Gary Gray, I love, I love it all. As a person. Didn't have to do it. As a person who it was a. did not have to do yeah. it. See, I know you guys looked at it. Yeah. They've been feuding for years. For them to get together. Okay, forget it. Let's do it. And they can it. And it's done in the can. I let's finish up how the rest of once we can tell the real. I'm back quiet on that one. <laughs> and that only makes you your project more really important. Think I, you know, I really don't. I'm just going to say this last thing. Give me about two seconds. Nah, not two seconds, about 30. <laughs> the only reason why I didn't like it, why then you put where it started? When I went to go and pick all them niggas up, you know why? Because they didn't want to pay me for that. Why didn't they put us pulling up in that damn uh that alley and putting that goddamn fluorescent spray paint on there? Why? Because they didn't want to pay me or nobody else that was around. That's not the story. That's the story. Don't start from Dr. Dre laying in this room, listening to uh, Summertime. Well, you know what? No, if you're going to do the story, do it from the beginning. That's why it makes from where it started. That's why it makes that's podcasts more important. That's why it makes podcasts more important. It makes this documentary more important. So you guys can share your story. Cause I talked to a Alon- uh, Alonzo and I just had this conversation a couple of days ago and I told him, I said, you look at that movie in a different lens. Cause you was there, but as an outsider who was an NWA fan, I loved it. And I've watched it back to back, maybe four or five times already. But I understand, you know, other other people's, you know, opinions on why, you know, they wouldn't like it, especially if you were there. But my opinion, you know, I thought it was a it was a great film. And, and like Scotty said, I think it will it will go down as one of the best biopics hip hop wise, in my opinion. And I believe it. I believe it will, because it's different when you outside looking in than when right. you inside looking inside. Yeah, yeah. You know, then when you see it, and you kind of, because I said, well, I already knew that they wasn't getting ready to put the beginning in there. So I was getting ready to do a, a interview with somebody else, and they were like, well, we're going to do the interview, so uh, I want you to let us know what you feel about Straight out of Compton. So I went and got it, because I, if I get anything, I want. So I went and got it. It took me six hours to watch the motherfucker because I kept pausing it <laughs> and saying, that's not true. Uh-huh. That's not true. Uh, yeah. That's not true. That's you it. know what I mean? So it took me six hours to watch a I want to have a goddamn movie or however long it was. So after I watched it, then I had to go and do an interview about what do you think about uh, Straight Outta Compton? I like the movie overall. Every movie got to put a little pepper and salt where it ain't, or paint where it ain't. So I like the movie overall, but the story just didn't fall away. Everything happened. Nobody wasn't fucking with Easy when he died. They wasn't doing no music together. He fell out, then went to the hospital. That shit didn't happen. One thing I know for sure is he, for damn wrong, sure, Daddy. I know for damn sure he wasn't selling nickel bags of weed. I've heard that, uh, like, really? Oh, like, hell like, no. Like, come on. Like, they really painted it. Like you said, let's let's move on. But like you said, if, if Easy e was here, the movie would have been a little different. And, you know, Tamika was probably just about that money. So she's like, where's my check? And green greenlit everything. But, um how the West was won. Let's let's lead into that because I want to I want to wrap the conversation up. How the West was won. 
where can everybody find this project? Because I really want everybody out there to know about the history of West Coast hip hop. Uh, you can go to Flea, F L E A, Lee, L E E, TV, and look for Hollow Wesley one. You got about nine or ten, you got ten different documentaries on there, and he does live shows and everything. It's been the site. For anyone that wants to make money, if you promote it, they'll give you like $2 a screen. I want to go through your, um, through your platform. Oh, okay. That's good to know because I'm all over it. So, I'm all over it. That's all you need to tell me. <laughs> So not, that was not only a, a something you could watch, you could actually make some money, make a couple of dollars off of it. Oh, yeah. Like I said, I'm all ears. You got me, and I'm gonna get with you guys offline to see how we can make that happen. Um, gentlemen, that was that was a dope interview. I feel like we once again just even hit the tip of the iceberg. So I encourage everybody out there to still check out how the West was won because this this 45 48 minute conversation we had that was literally just the tip of the iceberg. You guys can definitely get the true story how the West was won. I encourage everybody out there to check that out. It's one O N E right, not W O N. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. O N E. Yeah. Yep, right. yep. And also, if you want got a problem with that, you can hit me on social media. Scotty, S-C-O-T-T-Y, space B, space Spencer, S-P-E-N-C-E-R, that's on Facebook. Uh, ask me all day or call me. You can call me personally. I got a personal phone number, 661-349-0241. Don't call me for no shenanigans. Just call me. And, um, <laughs> <laughs> business, Jen. Business, baby. I'm a G like that. I got, yeah, I got, I got, okay. a, yeah, I got a weird audience. So I might block out your number just to keep it real. I'll just put your social medias up there. I don't want anybody calling you at three no, in the morning. Want his number shit. on there. Okay. All right. There you it is. You want his number on there. Put right. that shit on there. If they can call that motherfucker. I want all of them to call and bug his ass. <laughs> I got colleges. We got colleges and everything. I got so many, man. People nice. want to call just to reach out, man. I'm a, I'm a guy about it. I ain't worried about it. But I'm well, not like, I ain't in dark. And, and where can we find uh, where can we find you at uh, Scratch? Uh, it's one uh, either you go Google me, <laughs> King Scratch, or uh, a uh, King um, Scratch everywhere. There you go. I like that. Easy. Uh, my Twitter is my my Twitter is uh, uh, real King the real King Scratch, but. You know what I'm saying? I, I, I don't know. They I on they suspended me. I don't know what I put up there. It wasn't like no naked shit. Yeah, people yeah. I don't know Social they, media's they, whack. This cancel culture is some BS, but that's a whole other story. Yeah, Gen- yeah gentlemen, it's, it's, it's it's go ahead, go ahead, keep going. King scratch. King scratch. No, every, every, everything can be scratched. And I'll have the comments. I'll, I'll have the. Um, I'll have all everybody's social media links and everything down below as well, as well as my man Scotty's phone number, so you guys can hit him up at three in the morning and tell him how much you love the NWA album. You just want to ask him yeah. a bunch of questions about NWA. Oh. Keep him up all night. No, I'm just fucking with you. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, gentlemen. Um, it's been a pleasure, man. I would love to have you guys on in the near future. Um, you know, maybe in a few months or so, just to Here's catch up again. It's about September. September the there whole it is. That'll be perfect. And, and, I'm a lo- I'm a lock it in for September. September. 